A family is dealing with a devastating loss. A boy hit and killed by a school bus. How he's being remembered and new details about the crash. A little bit of rain showing up across parts of the area. That rain right along a major temperature gradient. Wait until you see the current temp map in a moment. Fayette County has a plan to make up all the snow days missed this winter, how students will be in class longer, and how the last day of school will change. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. It's a cloudy and chilly day here in Lexington. Temperatures are in the 40s this afternoon. You're looking live at our sky cam in downtown Lexington. This time tomorrow could look and feel a lot different. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. And Chris, temperatures are all <laughs> over the map this afternoon. Yeah, they really are. And depending on uh, location, 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 well, it's summer versus early winter time across parts of the area. Let's get into it and show you the gloomy stuff here in Lexington. Looking toward the downtown area, low clouds, some showers out there. Just kind of an ugly afternoon working into the evening now across parts of the region. 46 in Lexington. We'll with a little bit of light rain coming in on a northeasterly wind, 10 miles an hour. Anytime you see a north uh, northeasterly wind, he says, that's going to be a chilly brand of air that is settling in across the region. Warm front is just two hour north, and look what it is unleashing across southern Kentucky. As we talked about yesterday, you were going to see another major temperature gradient setting up from north to south, 70 into London. 46 Lexington, Frankfurt, Mount Sterling, Covington right now checking in at 43 degrees. Now right along that boundary and especially into the cooler air, we are seeing some showers on and off across parts of central Kentucky. Heaviest band is on to uh, the east side of Fayette County now into Montgomery County, Bath County, back into southern Bourbon and around the Winchester area. Though another little band of some heavier rains trying to press in from Georgetown to Paris and then on the west side of Lexington. So you get to about the Keeneland area for sale. Road down toward Fayette Mall, Nicholasville Road area, locally heavy downpours coming down. That's a sign of things to come. Jennifer, as we track a major spring storm system into the area that has, yes, some spring and maybe a touch of winter with it, we'll explain coming up. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Thank you, Chris. It's a difficult day in southeastern Kentucky where the community is dealing with the death of a 10 year old student. Police say Jonathan Chatham had just been dropped off yesterday when a school bus hit him on Kentucky 779 near his home in the Rockholds community. All Whitley County schools are closed today. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has new details about what happened in our top story at four. The incident happened here along Kentucky Highway 779. Kentucky State Police are still looking into what happened. They tell me that it is still part of a very active and ongoing investigation. The 10 year old had just gotten off the bus when school officials say he walked up a bank on the side of the road, then re entered the path of the bus as it began moving forward. There were 20 other students on the bus when it happened. We're told the bus was driven by 33 year old Amanda Walliver. Transportation officials say that her CDL training and physicals are all up to date. She's always been a good employee, according to a quote from the superintendent's office. Today, all schools in Whitley County were closed. Jonathan went to North Whitley Elementary School. Its parking lot was full, and police officers were parked out front at the request of the superintendent. Reverend Ralph Jones says he's helping the family through a terrible time. You have to be there for them. Uh, offer prayer and support and uh, console them by the fact that uh, the Lord is uh, their strength at this time. The school bus driver, we are told, had been with the Whitley County system for three years, a bus driver for two years. We are told that she had a good record driving, no incidents, driving more than 120 miles a day. More on her and more on how this community is helping this family coming up in our next newscast. But for now, in Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Whitley County school officials say schools will be open tomorrow and grief counselors will be both at the schools and on the bus that Jonathan was on. The Sheriff's Department is investigating after at least one person was shot during a fight in eastern Kentucky. Deputies in Breathitt County tell us it happened on Sewell Street in downtown Jackson. The Sheriff's Office says deputies tracked the suspected shooter to a home on Smith Branch Road. He is now in custody. 
So far, no charges have been filed. Police say the victim was shot in the face, and the victim's name has not been released, and his condition is not known. The Fayette County School Board has announced the plan for making up days missed during the winter storms. It's adding three days. Students will now have to go to school on April 10th, May 28th, and May 29th, which is the new last day of school. To make up the additional hours missed, the school day will be 30 minutes longer starting April 20th. I was worried because we're going on vacation. <laughs> you know, we're going on vacation June 3rd, and I'm like, you guys are still going to be in school. They probably check out after about 40, 45 minutes in a class anyway, so adding an extra 10 minutes to each class during a day, you know, maybe not the best, uh, best situation for them. Graduation dates have also been set for Fayette County. You can find those at WKYT.com. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick is in the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. A Lexington man appeared in court today to answer to charges he abused a baby. 26-year-old Matthew Byers was arraigned this afternoon in Fayette District Court. Police say the baby's mother brought her to UK hospital where doctors found she had seven fractures to her ribs and extremities. According to an arrest warrant, the mother told police she went to bed early and left the girl in buyer's care the night she was injured. Neighbors say they're shocked by the allegations. We went to the home where the alleged abuse happened. A woman inside did not want to talk about it. We'll have more on what happened in court coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. Police say a woman stole the identity of two people in order to get $50,000 in student loans. 51-year-old Martha Cook is charged with identity theft and theft by deception in Lee County. State police tell us the victims are two elderly women Cook once cared for as a home health nurse. She's accused of using their names, birth dates, social security and driver's license numbers to get the loans. We'll have more on this investigation coming up on WKYT News at 530. That's a quick look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Sam. That story is making headlines around the world at four. A French interior ministry official says a black box has been recovered from the site in the French Alps where a plane crashed. The jet was traveling from Barcelona to Dusseldorf today. All 150 people on board are believed to have died. A German official says the passengers included a high school group returning from an exchange trip to Spain. An official with Lufthansa, a German airline that owns the plane, says it's treating the crash as an accident for now, and the plane had been inspected yesterday. Tension is growing between Secret Service Director Joe Clancy and lawmakers demanding answers about an incident at the White House earlier this month. Two senior agents are accused of being intoxicated and interfering with a suspicious package investigation. Craig Boswell has the latest from Capitol Hill. This is surveillance video showing Secret Service agents in a government SUV nudging a temporary barrier during a bomb threat investigation outside the White House March 4th. Lawmakers are angry additional video hasn't been handed over or has been deleted. Most of the footage evidently, according to the Secret Service, has mysteriously gone missing. New Secret Service Director Joseph Clancy says video is only saved for 72 hours, but he's now changing that to one week. Clancy found out about the incident five days later with an anonymous email that described the off-duty agents as intoxicated. They were not given sobriety tests. This is not business as usual. Clancy immediately turned over the investigation to the inspector general, but lawmakers are frustrated the director will not allow agents involved to testify. They're the rank and file. They didn't sign up for coming in front of an open hearing with, this, uh, with the cameras and lights and uh, I think it's my responsibility. Lawmakers also questioned why the woman who left the suspicious package was not immediately arrested. When they come to the gate and they've got a bomb and they say they have a bomb, believe them, take them down. This is Clancy's third grilling on the incident. He says he needs time to fix the Secret Service culture and hire more agents. Clancy said the Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General could take several weeks to investigate the incident. The two Secret Service officials under investigation have been reassigned to desk duty until the report is complete. President Barack Obama welcomes Afghanistan's new president to the Oval Office today to talk about the future relationship between the two countries. When the two leaders sat down this afternoon, President Obama was expected to announce that he plans to keep American troops in Afghanistan longer. 
Deficiencies in the Afghan security forces, heavy casualties among the army and police, a fragile new government, and the threat by ISIS have persuaded the president to slow the withdrawal. A trip to the grocery store can eat up your budget. We'll have tips on how to be a smart shopper at the supermarket in WKYT Money Watch. And it's called net neutrality. The federal government says the new rules will give more Americans access to the Internet. Find out who disagrees and why they're suing ahead on WKYT News at 4.